at number nine, some people wonder whether regional accents like a strong Chicago accent are slowly going away. Well, here's a clip that shows how strong the New York accent was for kids in the late 70s and early 80s. They're part of a PSA asking people to conserve water. <laughs> Ask your sister to sit in a half a tub of water. You just saved over 10 gallons of water. So keep New York wet. Save water. Turn the water off when your mother's brushing her teeth. You'll save over a gallon of water. Keep New York wet. Save water. <laughs> Ask your sister to sit in Fantastic. a half a tub yeah. of water. Water. Save water. Turn the water off when your mother's brushing her teeth. <laughs> I don't know. I do. I, I, does it sound like it's getting any any less? Well, there's no there's nobody who lives in Manhattan. Uh, nobody who lives in Manhattan anymore who's from Manhattan anymore. Ah. But know? I mean, I don't think the Chicago accident accent has gotten any less in in the circles I'm in. But. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because nobody wants to move here. <laughs> so we're pretty strong. Stay in put. Chicago blood. Yeah, you never know. All right, number eight, the research is complete. Athens, Greece is the best smelling city in Europe. That's according to a UK-based company that helps people transition from smoking to healthier alternatives. To create the ratings, 30 major cities across Europe were given a smell score based on factors such as cleanliness, and proportion to flower shops, bakeries, and perfume shops. Athens took the top prize, despite being one of the oldest capitals in the world. Uh, Paris, France came in at number two, and Zurich, Switzerland uh, is the, in the three spot. Oh. All right, number seven, uh, the tide is turning, at least among some Zoomers who are dialing back the clock by trading in their smartphones for dumb phones to reclaim their time and mental health. According to the report, for some, it's an attempt to crush an addiction and eliminate distractions, but others look at the switch in part as a fashion trend, mm. predicting that early 2000s technology is making a comeback, as is clothing from that era. Dumb phone users say the biggest setback, however, is the lack of navigation, which makes traveling a more difficult and, uh, hey, you could bought the old <laughs> Rand McNally Atlas. Or try trunk. try texting when you have to type three yeah. buttons for every letter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, all right, number six, you've probably heard of intermittent fasting, but you may not be aware of the potential setbacks it causes. 20,000 adults were surveyed and researched, uh, and sorry, research showed that people who ate within a window of eight hours a day or less may double their risk of death from heart and vascular disease compared to those who spread their meals out. Dietitians say if you're going to practice this, stay hydrated. That and uh, timing is instrumental. Time your exercise to be at the end of your fasting window will help. But above all, experts say it could take time to adjust to the diet and pick a fasting window that works for your schedule. A lot all of right. hydration stories this morning. Yeah. Keep jamming the water down our throat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, number five: falling asleep with the TV on. People often do it to distract their mind and ease into a relaxed state before hitting the hay. But does it hitting hamper? the hay? Hitting, hitting the hay. See, hey, see? that's yeah. what they produce. That's what they wrote there in the script. See, uh, but does it hamper the quality of your sleep? Well, that blue mm. light that you know the TV screens give off can actually suppress your body's release of melatonin. So if you do oh, watch no. something before bed, experts suggest watching on a TV that's farther away from you and setting a timer to ensure the TV is off when you finally fall asleep. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know the TVs had timers. They hmm. do. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I seriously, yeah, you just watch time forever. Now. I yeah. mean, you just leave it on forever. It's fine. Yeah. You can set well, a timer. You do that too, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Didn't know. Right off. All right. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. No. Where, do you, where is that? In it's settings? Like a sleep button. I can't even find settings on you, my TV. Did you know you could adjust brightness on those TVs? <laughs> yeah, too? but I don't know how to do it. You have to have yeah. the original remote from the TV. Oh, it's awful. Not the, it can, yeah. We will return it. to our regular schedule. All right, well, number four uh, this is a dangerous cheese. It's called Casu Marzu, and it's big on the Italian island of Sardinia. It's a sheep's milk cheese that has live maggots in it. Oh, oh. what? All right, bear with me. It starts as pecorino, but the cheesemaker then lets it go far past the typical fermentation stage to the point that the larvae of cheese flies oh, infest the cheese. Flies. This is done intentionally. The larvae break down oh. the fats in the cheese and it becomes soft 
and very gooey. Oh. The cheese then has a very tangy oh. flavor. And buckle up for this part. When people eat it, those maggots are still moving. Oh, come on. Along with a glass of red wine, people like to spread it on flat bread no, while no. holding one hand above the cheese and cracker to prevent the maggots from leaping a few oh, centimeters come on. up. They're eating uh, the maggots? More, more cautious people will put the cheese in a brown paper bag for a minute and wait for the pitter patter to end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that my God. that <laughs> means the maggots have died uh, from lack of oxygen. And then you can eat the cheese. Can oh. you scrape the maggots Listen, off? No one has died from eating kasu marzu. Oh. But they're eating the maggots? I. It would it appear that way, yes. How badly do you want a piece of cheese? Yeah. I mean, really. There's no other cheese that'll do. I'll take the maggot cheese. I mean, that I'm not getting. Suddenly, that craft cheese in the plastic <laughs> yeah. wrapper is looking a lot better. That's right. Right in the can, yeah. Larry. Uh, <laughs> number <cheese>. Yeah. <laughs> Number three, exercise is important, but for a reason you may not realize. According to a new study, people who exercise more stress less, and research shows less stress has a positive effect on heart health. Are you serious? Water. The study analyzed medical yeah, records I mean. from 50,000 people over an average uh, follow-up of 10 years. Those who worked out had a 23% lower risk of developing cardiovascular disease compared to those who didn't exercise. And among those with higher levels of stress-related brain activity, the cardiovascular benefits were even greater. Are they just torturing us this morning, telling us when to eat, all the water, all the exercise? Mm -hmm. Enough. Too much. <laughs> all right, number two. Here's another one from the great Twitter feed called Culture Critic, which has a thread about some of the world's greatest architecture that was torn down. This is Chicago's Garrick Theater. It was built on Randolph near Dearborn in 1891. It was made for the German Opera Company. The architect was Louis Sullivan, who did so many of Chicago's grand buildings. At the time of its construction, it was among the tallest in Chicago. It had this ornate 1300 seat theater in it despite a lot of protest it was dem demolished for a parking garage in 1961. today there's a corner bakery in that spot oh well then it's okay <laughs> some of the oh, exterior of the building was saved and that's what you see at the main entrance to the second city in Old Town. oh yeah. yeah huh oh. listen would you rather have soup in a bread bowl or go to the opera right i mean Boring. <laughs> I don't get it. The, uh, but I, my, there's a lot that's lost on me. Yeah. So don't, yeah, don't measure. I'm sure it's mm -hmm. wonderful. I just. Uh, yeah. You're going not, French I, onion in a bread bowl. Going French onion in a bread bowl, but that's just me. I, I'm, I'm not that cool. All right, number one. Here's another one of those '70s variety TV specials that doesn't make much sense. It's called The Carpenters Space Encounters. And along with pop stars Richard and Karen Carpenter, people like Suzanne Somers and John Davidson just show up. We can only assume the network was jumping on the Star Wars craze, which would explain the space robots. So here you go. Throw away your corset before you bust your buckle. Keep your cool, don't force it. It's time to do the hustle. Oh, no. What, it's getting awesome now? Is that what you were going to no, say? No, I'm just, when you have, I mean, two great musicians like Richard and Garrett Carpenter, and you're having them dance when it's <laughs> not their forte. Oh, my God. I, the Carpenters weren't even cool in the 70s. No, look at, oh, Richard doesn't have much rhythm. Wonderful songwriter. But, oh. Oh, yeah, he's way behind. John Davidson's there, and who else? John Davidson was the king of the 70s variety yeah. shows. Yeah. Suzanne Summers? Someone else there on the left? This is awful. Oh. This is pretty much the worst video ever made. <laughs> what is going on? Oh. Boy, that had to be a really big check. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nine and nine. Nine and nine, nine and nine. Wow. nine you do it again. Nine and nine. Yeah. You can't get up the time. Just uh -oh. a 